During the mid-1960s, a pioneering group of Lockheed engineers set out to develop a revolutionary new weapon system for the U.S. Army. The result was the AH-56 Cheyenne, an aircraft that combined the flexibility and maneuverability of a conventional helicopter with the speed and stability of a fixed-wing aircraft. The Cheyenne was one of the first aircraft to successfully harness the phenomenal control power of a rigid rotor, enabling pilots to easily conduct high-speed maneuvers during nap-of-the-earth flight. The system was compounded with a pair of stub wings and a powerful push-up prop that provided rapid acceleration to speeds in excess of 230 miles per hour. On board, an advanced fully automated fire control system allowed the Cheyenne's two-man crew to simultaneously launch devastating attacks in every direction. Massive barrages of 30 mm cannon fire, 40 mm grenades, and even 2.75 inch rockets could all be delivered with pinpoint accuracy. The Cheyenne's fully integrated weapon system also featured extremely advanced range-finding and navigational aids that made it perfectly suited for a more hazardous mission, tank busting. With the push of a button, the gunner could lock a tank's coordinates into the fire control system. The pilot was then free to maneuver in and out of rolling terrain or to use the pusher prop to rapidly decelerate into a concealed firing position. At any time, the target could be reacquired almost instantly and destroyed with one of up to 36 tow anti-tank missiles. By early 1969, extensive tests were being conducted on 10 Cheyenne prototypes. Onlookers were regularly astounded by the aircraft's phenomenal capabilities. Many of its new subsystems had been designed from scratch and would come to revolutionize aircraft and weapons development for decades. The Army was so pleased with the system that it authorized production of 375 Cheyennes under a contract that ultimately would have delivered more than 3,300 aircraft. Incredibly though, not a single production model would ever be built. This is the amazing story of the rise and the fall of the Lockheed Cheyenne. The strange saga of the Cheyenne began in the late 1950s with a simple radio-controlled model. Lockheed engineers had been searching for a way to develop a small helicopter for everyday use that was easy to fly. They designed the model to see if it was possible to rigidly attach rotor blades directly to a helicopter's hub, rather than to the lead lag and flapping hinges used on most conventional systems. By doing so, they theorized that the inherent instability of all helicopters could virtually be eliminated. The engineers were right. And within a few months, a scaled-up version of the model, known as the CL-475, had been built to conduct additional tests. Helicopter designers had been forced to settle on unstable, hinged rotor systems in order to overcome gyroscopic forces produced by spinning blades. Lockheed's rigid rotor concept incorporated a separate control gyro designed to help offset those forces. The blades were linked to the gyro by individual control arms. The gyro, like any rapidly spinning object, wanted to remain in a fixed plane of orbit. As a result, it naturally forced the control arms to adjust the pitch of the blades as necessary, ensuring that the entire helicopter would remain on the same plane unless otherwise directed. This surprisingly simple system proved to be extremely stable in flight, 
yielded a phenomenal amount of control power and was extraordinarily easy to operate. In fact, the Model 475 was so easy to control that a mechanic who had flown in small aircraft once flew it back from the desert rather than tow it in, even though he had never flown in a helicopter. To dramatically illustrate just how stable the new platform was, Lockheed engineers perched a man on a boom attached to the side of the aircraft. The man's weight created an enormous offset to the center of gravity that would have been extremely difficult for conventional rotor systems to handle. But the 475 automatically compensated for the offset, easily maintaining level flight. The success of the 475 led Lockheed to enter the US Army's 1961 competition for a new light observation helicopter. Three more conventional designs were selected, but the Army was impressed enough with the Lockheed's rotor system to award a separate contract. The result was the XH-51, a somewhat bigger and more refined helicopter designed and built solely to test the capabilities of Lockheed's rigid rotor. The 51 quickly demonstrated a degree of stability never before achieved in a helicopter. For the first time, handling qualities were equivalent to those of a fixed wing aircraft. Expanded stability tests indicated that the new system produced an even larger center of gravity than in the 475. In this phenomenal sequence, a man perched on a 16-foot boom effectively moved the helicopter's C of G more than 10 inches without upsetting the rotor's natural ability to maintain a hover. Other demonstrations indicated that the system could also easily handle rapid shifts in the center of gravity. These unusual properties would eventually allow Lockheed engineers to push the envelope of helicopter performance to extraordinary heights. Unlike the Model 475, the XH-51 reflected jet age technology. It had a streamlined fuselage with flush riveting, retractable landing gear, and control rods that were located inside the rotor shaft. Throughout early 1963, extensive test flights were conducted on two XH-51 prototypes by Lockheed and by the pilots of a joint Army-Navy evaluation program. The unique rigid rotor configuration continued to exhibit numerous advantages over conventional rotor systems, including the ability to maintain phenomenal pitch and roll control, even at zero gravity. But one factor in particular emerged to become a driving force in Lockheed's helicopter development program, speed. Within four months of taking flight, the XH-51 had been flown at 160 miles an hour. Eventually, it would reach speeds in excess of 200 miles an hour, an incredible feat, even by today's standards. The XH-51's capabilities proved to be so phenomenal that they attracted interest from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Eventually, NASA officials even ordered a 51 of their own to conduct additional research on the flight characteristics of hingeless rotor systems. The tremendous success of the program convinced Lockheed officials that there were strong possibilities for a commercial venture. As a result, the company built two modified versions of the 51 for themselves under the designation model 286. The 286 was a five-seat utility helicopter 
expressly designed to increase public interest in the benefits of the rigid rotor system. Like its predecessor, it was fast, stable, and extremely simple to fly. The cockpit even featured trim systems just like those found in fixed-wing aircraft to help pilots set and maintain specific aircraft attitudes while in flight. To clearly illustrate the incredible control power of the 286's rigid rotor system, Lockheed pilots conducted several spectacular air show demonstrations. Pilots performed numerous rolls, loops, split S's, and other thrilling aerobatic maneuvers that were virtually impossible to duplicate in conventional systems. The agility and maneuverability of the unusual helicopter regularly astounded spectators. But it was the pilot's ability to maintain positive control power, even during inverted flight, that shocked aviation experts from around the world. Lockheed successfully carried the 286 through FAA certification in 1966. Unfortunately, a lack of commercial interest coincided with several major setbacks on other Lockheed contracts to prevent the helicopter from ever reaching production. But the rigid rotor revolution that Lockheed engineers had started was far from over. In 1963, Lockheed engineers began developing a compound helicopter under a broader U.S. Army effort to further explore the possibilities of high-speed flight. Their goal was to build on the earlier successes of the XH-51 by adding a pair of stub wings and a jet engine to the fuselage. After conducting preliminary wind tunnel tests on a scaled model, the team began modifying one of the existing airframes to withstand the unusual configuration. Among other things, additional reinforcement had to be installed around the plexiglass windshield in anticipation of the higher speeds expected in compound flight. The compounded XH-51 was then subjected to extensive structural testing to ensure that the airframe could handle the forces